If you don't know me, you can also call me Lila. And today I would like to talk about fashion. I want to bring back from the dead the 2010s trends and more specifically the skater skirt item that was very famous back in the days. Now, if you don't know what the skater skirt is, it's basically called like that because it resembles the shape of the dress that figure skaters would wear, meaning that it's very cinched and narrow at the waist and then it will just flare out toward the bottom. During the 2010s, I was going through my teenage years and I remember falling in love with the galaxy leggings, the denim jackets with studs on the shoulders and of course the Jeffrey Campbell little shoes and that's just to name a few. So I too have fallen for the skater skirt trend when I was a teenage girl and I bought one but I <laughs> didn't want to go for a regular one, of course. So I picked an American apparel skater skirt with a somehow holographic print on it. It's supposed to be a vegan leather, which I don't know what it stands for. It has been tinted, I don't know how, with this very holographic pattern. And if you just go under the sun with it, you will look like a rainbow. Overall, the point of this video is just to show you how I would style this skater skirt nowadays according to, well, today's standards slash my very own taste, even though I am no longer wearing the skater skirt because, well, the fabric is a little bit too weird for me. And if I had gone, on the other hand, for a regular black or brown skater skirt, maybe it would still do the job today, but this one I feel is a little bit too outdated for my liking. So anyway, hope you enjoy these outfits. Okay, so when I was thinking of this outfit, I think that the goal for me was to make it look suitable according to today's standards. And for that, I decided to wear the skirt with my good old blazer. And again, <laughs> I don't really like blazer that much, but it does the job. I like it. So I'm going to stop complaining about the whole blazer trend thing. Anyway, wearing this blazer with an oversized very street style t-shirt from Stasi that I really love and I really appreciate this oversized look regarding the fact that the skirt is very narrow at the waist so it just gives more volume and and overall it just creates a better silhouette and shape to the outfit in general and with that I just added a pair of sandals honestly it's just a regular pair of sandals I couldn't really explain why but I like that these sandals have a sort of street style look and um, the heels is not that high so it's actually pretty comfortable and i believe that they are made of leather and anyway and i think that if you don't really pay attention that much on the skirts fabric the overall look is pretty basic and streetwear so so i wouldn't be surprised if i were to go outside and see someone wearing this exact outfit as for the makeup and hairstyle, I just went for something really basic and I just put on some red lipstick. For this second outfit, honestly, I feel like what I'm wearing was fashionable in the 2010s but still is today somehow. It's actually a very simple, I would even say minimalistic outfit. I'm just wearing a graphic tee, it's from Obey, and with that comes my pair of Vans. And I actually bought them in the beginning of the summer because I was looking for a pair of shoes that would be comfortable, easy to walk with, and at the same time not too boring and I didn't really want to go for a pair of sandals because I knew that for this summer particularly I had to walk a lot but I really appreciate the small details in these shoes that is the rainbows that you have on the white part of the shoe I like the fact that they can be a statement in and of itself because they are still colorful shoes even though they are very basic 
and the tiny platforms just you know at first you won't notice it but then you will see that they are still a basic model but with a small additional touch and this is what i really appreciate about that also i tried to think about a makeup that i could do with this outfit but the thing is i have a really hard time putting on colorful makeup when i'm wearing orange and so i just went with something very simple and not colorful at all this third outfit I think that I have found the outfit that I would be the more comfortable with wearing nowadays because this is the one that I would feel more like me I decided to pair this skirt with a very simple white shirt that I bought for one euro in a thrift store in Paris I'm really proud about that purchase by the way and I paired it with a denim jacket that is from Diesel and that on the contrary did not cost me one euro it was on sale but I think I probably bought it for 90 euros or something but I have to say I bought it on the spring of 2019 and I've never stopped wearing it ever since I don't know how it works for you but I usually have my go-to pieces that I never stop wearing like no matter what I wear I will usually wear it with those set pieces for example whenever I step outside I'm always wearing this jacket and this is also true for this pair of Doc Martens that I actually got for Christmas of 2016 and just because one they are so easy to walk with even though they are Doc Martens and two because they are sort of a statement piece with the very colorful uh, painting splash without catching the eye too much I just wear them all throughout the year I think that it will go well with almost everything so yeah that's basically why overall this is the outfit that currently looks like something I would wear For the fourth and final outfit, I had to pay homage to the 2010s trends and I'm going all the way in uh, without a doubt with this very outdated tie and dye denim jacket with studs on the shoulders. I fell in love with it when I was again 14, 15, I can't remember, but I would wear it every day until I wouldn't. But it was one of my favorite things back in the days and I just love it. And I actually wore it with the skirt. So yeah, I'm just bringing back things from the past. And this is me from when I was 16. So enjoy. I'm also wearing it with another American apparel item. And that is this very bright pink, Barbie pink crop top that I got on Vinted actually. And just so you know, I have the exact same crop top. but. In another color it's actually a bright blue but this other top i paid the full price for it because i went and bought it in the store whereas this pink one i bought it for nine euros i believe and i just can't believe how american apparel was so expensive but now when you look online on secondhand retail stores it just it has become so cheap and i'm sorry if it will sound outrageous but I still like some items from American Apparel, so I'm really happy that price have gone down because this is actually why I bought this crop top. Let's be honest, it's very tight, but at the same time it fits well and it doesn't prevent me from breathing, so that's a good thing. And I still like wearing this crop top nowadays, so, so yeah, let's just say that my toxic relationship with American Apparel has not ended yet, apparently. And as for the shoes, well, let me tell you, those were the second pair of Doc Martens that I ever owned. The first one just got worn off way too quickly and I just gave it away or just threw it away, I can't remember. I remember uh, my parents bought it for me when we were on a trip in California, I believe. We just went in a shopping mall and I saw those shoes, I became crazy about it. So I just couldn't stop talking about it to my parents until they eventually bought it to me because, you know, I'm just a spoiled child. Anyway, so I was feeling so overconfident in them. They were my very first love 
when it comes to Doc Martin's shoes. But let me tell you that this love story ended in a very tragic heartbreak. When I had the wonderful idea of taking this pair of shoes as my one and only pair of shoes during a trip to Berlin back in 2019. And I was supposed to walk with these shoes for about three to four days straight. And let me tell you, we were walking every day and those shoes turned into my worst nightmare because they fit me well, but somehow my toe would just be pressed against the shoe and the fabric is just very rigid, very solid. It, it won't move and it won't follow your foot's movements, if that makes sense. It's basically as if you were trying to walk in stones, like you couldn't, you would hurt yourself so much. And I even tried to trade my shoes with my friend's shoes, even though she had smaller feet. So when I came back from this trip, I officially took these shoes off and now I only wear them a couple of times a year and probably thinking of selling them, but I would not recommend these shoes. They're cool, they look cool, but oh boy, were they uncomfortable. Doc Martens shouldn't be allowed to make shoes that uncomfortable. Otherwise, I just think that this one outfit is the one that I would be the least susceptible of wearing. However, this is probably the most fun one. You know, overall, I think it just gave me the idea of maybe doing more fashion related videos, but only focusing on one item that I may have in my closet. And I don't know, just talk about the history of said item or trying to stack this item in different situations with different outfits and stuff. And my point would definitely be to try and slow down regarding my consumption of fashion and yeah, to help myself just appreciate the things that I already have. And hopefully this could potentially help other people to also enjoy more what they already possess. So yeah, that's an idea that I would keep in mind. I hope that you have a nice day. Don't forget, if you want, to go and follow me on Instagram. And as for me, as usual, I will see you next week.